Good morning, everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. Hello, Tonto. Look at that desolation. There's not another soul around. Today, we are somewhere that hopefully Andrea can tell us about. So where are we? We are in the middle of a lava field in the middle of Arizona in the middle of nowhere and we're in search of the Oatman massacre site. Now if you're familiar with the Oatmans they were a family of Mormons that were traveling from Illinois to California in 1951 when their covered wagon got attacked by Native Americans and all of them bar three were murdered. Again look at this landscape it is beautiful but it is also soaked with the blood of the Oatman family. This is the exact site the massacre took place. So here we are where on that fateful day on February the 18th, 1851, nearly a whole family were massacred. Can you imagine Olivia Oatman and her sister Mary Ann were taken by the Apaches. They watched as their families were clubbed to death. She saw her father beaten, her brother Lorenzo beaten almost to death. She thought he was dead at the time. And her mother, holding a baby in her arms, was also beaten to death, along with four other of her siblings. That must have been absolutely horrendous. Olivia and Mary Ann were taken captive by the Apaches and were slaves for well over a year. Now after a year of being slaves, they were traded for a couple of horses, some blankets and some other knickknacks to the Mojave tribe. Now this was really fortunate because Olive and her sister Mary Ann were adopted by the Mojave chief as his own two children and she stayed with them for nearly five years. Now unfortunately Mary Ann died. They think it could have been to do with drought because a lot of the Mojave tribe also died but no one can be really sure of that and even Olive never knew. But in 1856 Olive was rescued by white people and delivered to Fort Yuma. There she was reunited with her brother Lorenzo who she had thought was dead but he had never given up hope looking for his sisters. Now many books have been written about the massacre of the Oatman family and Olive and her brother Lorenzo actually toured for many years telling their story around America. Now it's such a shame that this is the only sign that marks that horrendous day. The graves are further down. Let's take a look.
right, so we've got a few more points we'd like to talk about uh, while we're here at this marker behind us. And one of them is this Oatman family was traveling from Illinois to California. Uh, they were very, very close to California, unfortunately, when this happened. And the thing is, even by today's standards, I mean, the road we came on to get to this point, because it's way out in the middle of nowhere, like Andrea mentioned earlier, we had a hard time getting here. Um, fortunately, we have a 4x4 pickup truck, uh, but we had to drive extremely slow and let the air down in our tires. And that's with the modern comforts. Imagine coming across this in a covered wagon. That had to be absolutely difficult to deal with. And, you know, when you get to this point, there's a little bit of discrepancy with historians. So Olive mentions that her family was attacked by the Apaches, and that's who took her. Historians years later said, no, she was incorrect. She was taken by the Yavapai in a little band called the uh, Tolka... Tolka it? something. Tolka, yeah. So we would like to pose that question to you. Who do you think is more accurate? The person it happened to or historians later on? And also she actually lived with her attackers for over a year as a slave. So she would have picked up some of the language, I would have thought, um, before she was rescued. And she always maintained that it was the Apaches. The other thing with this marker the bodies are here. Now, obviously they were originally buried by Lorenzo three days after the attack. He came back and buried his mother, father and baby. But he had several other siblings and there's no mention of those siblings anywhere. Now the bodies have been moved several times. We believe they are here. They might still be up at the massacre site. I don't know. I couldn't find that information out online. However, again, not one mention of the actual names, not even Royce and his wife, Mary Ann, let alone the kids, no names on the grave. And that's one of the things that is a bit frustrating because this is, a, this is a, quite a good piece of history that happened here. And driving past, you would never know any of this took place. And getting back to the Oatmans, there's even a town named after Olive Oatman called Oatman. It's on Route 66. You should go and check it out. Fun fact. Apparently, Olive was devastated when she was rescued by the white people because she was leaving a husband and two children behind. She, however, denies that statement throughout the rest of her life. True story. What ended up happening to Olive? Olive married a Texan, moved to Texas, and died of a heart attack at the age of 65. And she is buried in a cemetery in Texas. Hmm. All right, everyone. Well, I hope this video inspires you to to seek out more history especially in your area you know a lot of this is farmland now and uh, you would never know what historically took place on these lands so on that note get out there get exploring put another pin in the atlas and we will see you on our next adventure bye, bye.